Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. We have a picture of the pursuit. Sammy, hurry this up, just gonna kill somebody. Oh! We got him, we got him, they're down on the ditch. Look around. He's wrecked, he's wrecked. No matter where you are, at any second, oh, oh. it could happen to you. Oh, man, we need some help. Because desperate criminals use desperate measures, no matter who gets in the way. For the next 60 minutes, you'll get a close-up view of what officers see every day. You'll ride shotgun in the most terrifying chases on the road. You'll feel the heat of the most explosive acts of criminal insanity ever captured on tape. Much of this footage has never been viewed by the public. Police and news agencies send us their most shocking videos. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. So that you can know what they know. That to let your guard down, even for an instant, Get in could mean disaster. He's gonna run the red light, he's gonna run it. So crank up your TV and don't turn away because real life happens in the blink of an eye. Shut your truck off. I'm Sheriff John Bennell. The video cameras allowed us to see the true face of crime. We've been able to witness everything from drug buyers to murder for hires and carjackers to con men. That's why concerned officers send us these tapes, because the more we know about crime, the less likely we are to be victims. Lauderdale County, Mississippi. The man driving this Buick just tried to hold up a store at gunpoint. We're going over to the south. Now, Deputy Kenneth Graham is on his bumper. I'm right behind the vehicle. The suspect immediately tries to shake the cops by getting on the freeway, heading into opposing traffic. He's to get on the, the Buick bogs down in the mud, while the cruisers also struggle with the soggy terrain. The suspect wriggles free. It takes a moment for the deputy and his backup to regroup. Hold on. And the suspect manages to slip past them. We're getting on the interstate, sir. Determined to stop him without excessive force, a deputy ahead jumps the concrete divider despite the suspect's tires. But the fugitive passes before the officer can even deploy the sticks. Then the officers get a little civilian help. It looks like we got some truckers going to help us out. But the Buick skitters by with no room to spare. It's obvious that this fugitive will either get away or wreck his car trying. Watch out, Mike. Mike, we'll let you take the lead. You got the stronger car. The officers quickly move into position for more assertive tactics. I believe we're coming up under the sweep on bottom of the bridge. The officers set up a rolling roadblock. And for a moment, it looks like it might work. That's when the would-be robber leads police through another swampy median. But he finds the other side swarming with backup units. I got a DOT, I got B-36 city units and number 11. Two cops pull ahead and neatly block off both lanes. The suspect squeezes by on the embankment. But when he tries to regain the pavement, things get crazy. Just off screen, the suspect sideswiped Deputy Street's cruiser. The collision sent him spinning right into the path of Graham's unit. Up ahead, an officer waits with another set of stop sticks. But the suspect sees the trap. Look out! He avoided the spikes by veering toward the officer. The suspect runs on with his tires intact. And police are running out of options. With the help of some friendly truckers, officers finally corner him. We've slowed down to 70, got some trucks blocking. There's not an inch of road to spare. 
until the runner opens a path by bashing into a cruiser. The hubcap goes flying as the suspect churns his way through the mud. As soon as the guy is back on the freeway, a cruiser moves in from the right and hits the sweet spot. Having exhausted less aggressive tactics, the deputy took the suspect out with a solid hit that sent the Buick reeling into the forest. As police from several agencies descend on the vehicle, the robber foolishly locks himself in tight. But with this many officers on the scene, a locked door isn't going to keep them out. Moments later, the suspect is on the ground. Are you hold still? In cuffs and in custody. When confronting a criminal this violent, there's no such thing as a fair fight. That's why these deputies called in a dozen units. And used every available resource. To put this desperate criminal right where he belongs. Are you hold still? For years, news helicopters have provided us with raw footage of police chases and human drama. Oh, look at that! Oh, no! All as the action unfolds. But sometimes, News helicopters catch stories they never expected. Okay, there are two guys down there. They seem to be fighting in the river. Bellflower, California. When the San Gabriel River is swollen with rain, it's often the scene of dramatic rescues. But today, it's the stage for a bizarre struggle. Seeing the fight unfold, helicopter pilot Larry Welk notifies police. Police need to send a unit down here to the San Gabriel River. They're in the water. One man seems to have a weapon, but it does no good when he's dragged under the surface. This is more than just a brawl. That one guy's trying to drown the other one. It's an attempted murder. The helpless man struggles for breath and slowly slips away from his attacker. But it's out of the frying pan and into the fire as a raging current pulls him further downstream. Man, he is moving very fast in the water. All Welk can do is try and maintain sight of the man whose life is now in even greater danger. Keep your eyes on the other side of that bridge. Let's try and stay with him. When the victim resurfaces, he struggles to keep his head above water as the powerful current carries him away. OK, there he is. There he is. A civilian onlooker rushes toward the drowning man. He urges the victim to swim closer to the riverbank, but it's no use. The man is using every last bit of energy just to stay afloat. Police have to get here fast. I don't think this guy can hold on much longer. Suddenly, his assailant re-enters the scene. This is the same guy. He took off his shirt, but that is definitely the same guy. But this time, he's trying to save the man. Realizing witnesses may have seen his drowning attempt, the man wades in to rescue his victim. Now, this is unbelievable. What he doesn't know is that real help is not far off. OK, police are here. A sheriff's deputy uses his jacket as a rescue rope, and the man who was once trying to kill the victim helps him to safety. They've got him out of the water. Once on shore, the two men gasp for air. The attacker acts as though he's a hero, but there are witnesses on the scene, and videotape to prove him wrong. Police take him away in handcuffs, while the victim is taken away in an ambulance. When the district attorney got a hold of this dramatic and damning tape. Like he's trying to drown him. Not only was the suspect charged with attempted murder. This is the same guy. Bail was set at $1 million. This is unbelievable. DeKalb County, Georgia. Atlanta police and FBI agents are on the tail of suspected serial bank robber, Peter John Hoon. This robber has hit at least seven banks in the Atlanta area over the last six months. He's shown a weapon in at least three of these robberies, and we consider him to be armed and dangerous. After this photo appeared in local papers, neighbors tipped off police. 
but when officers arrived at Hoon's home, he bolted. Now, he's trying to escape more than a dozen ground units, three trailing helicopters, and seven counts of armed robbery. The police are very concerned that he might have a gun on him, and the last thing they want here is an armed standoff. Blasting over speed bumps, the suspect is willing to tear his Toyota apart. Without pause, he races into an intersection, nearly T-boning a cop. Whoa, he just missed an officer there. The cruisers in pursuit drop back to a safe distance. Well, it's obvious the ground unit to try not to push him too hard on these narrow, wet roads. Commuters wisely pull to the side as Hoon's black Camry speeds up behind them. But when he straddles the center line, the fugitive finds himself face to face with a squad car. Oh, almost head on with that Atlanta PD unit there. He's off the road, this could come to an end. No, he's still going. But as the suspect approaches the center of town, DeKalb County PD officers join in the chase. He has a green line up ahead, but the intersection is blocked by ground units. Oh, he's over the median now. He's in oncoming lanes. There's a county unit. Oh, very close call. The pursuit is proceeding so quickly that units ahead of the chase barely have time to prepare. There's an officer on foot in the intersection ahead blocking traffic. Officer T.R. Thacker has only an instant. Should he dive out of the way or hold his ground? The choice is made. It looks like it's working. The guy's actually stopping. Another squad car boxes the Toyota in, and Officer Thacker drags the suspected bank robber to the pavement. In moments, the terrifying manhunt is over. Code 4, this is an incredible conclusion to what could have been a real disaster. The officer receives handshakes from his amazed colleagues and criticism from those who think he took too big a risk. But Thacker's quick to point out that he's not in the hero business. You have to read each situation as it comes up and raise his hands up as if he was going to stop. And if I wouldn't have felt like I had a chance to get out of the way and I left myself a way out, I wouldn't have been standing there. During the pursuit of a dangerous felon. Whoa, he just missed an officer there. An officer's trained instincts are put to the test at every turn. But what does a good cop do when his training says one thing and his gut says another? Officer Thacker weighed his experience and his instincts. But it wasn't until he looked into the suspect's eyes that he knew the best way to end this chase. Just ahead, on police videos, Look what the cops dragged in. These are some of the most bizarre. You gotta get some clothes on. Most surprising. We can see inside the car. It looks like they're hugging. Most outrageous criminals. Put me off. Ever captured on video. They're rough. Tough. We just went in the truck. And in the buff. You can't get to Florida naked. Next. There are moments in a pursuit where you might expect even the most heartless felon to finally stop. But don't count on it. Baird, Texas. Callahan County Sheriff's close in on a DUI suspect. The guy behind the wheel is high on crack, posing an extreme danger to other motorists. A deputy races ahead of the pack to set the trap. But if police can stop the suspect even before he reaches his bike strip, they will. They call for the help of their good old buddies at the top of the interstate food chain. Breaker 1 9, Breaker 1 9. I'm asking for help from truck drivers. We're chasing a pickup truck westbound I 20. If a couple of you could get together and kind of slow this guy down for us, do not put yourself in danger. The truckers hear the request loud and clear. As the Suburban changes lanes, they double up their massive trailers to create an impassable barrier. Do not put yourself in jeopardy. The suspect weaves from left to right, looking for even the smallest hole to break through. Suddenly, his right front door swings open. It's the driver's female passenger. She shouts to the pursuing officers. 
For police, it's not clear whether she's taunting them or trying to escape the vehicle. But with an abrupt jerk of the Suburban's wheel, it becomes irrelevant. Okay, the truck driver's gonna try to bring it to a stop. One just went into a truck. The passenger tumbles out of the SUV and gets sucked under the back tires. I'm gonna need an ambulance. The woman's lucky to suffer only lacerations. Her brush with death should be a sobering slap in the face to the driver. But the drug-hazed man doesn't even seem to care. He cuts across the median and accelerates. Police reposition the spikes to match the suspect's new course. The driver hits the spikes at high speed, but because of radio miscommunication, so do the officers. I hit him too, damn it, Bobby. Luckily, the suspect struck the spikes hard enough to flip them over, rendering the deflators harmless to the police cruisers. But the cops don't know that yet. Did you hit the spikes? Racing to catch up, the officers spot the now sparking Suburban. He's breathing very badly. With four exposed rims, he might as well be driving on ice. But if running over another human being didn't stop this guy, neither will a little lost traction. Officers completely surround the struggling vehicle. Stop, dang it. The suspect keeps his foot on the gas, trying to hold off the inevitable. But it's all in vain. Police stop the truck, shattering his delusions of escape. The crack-addled suspect later claimed that pit bulls were attacking him in his car. The dogs weren't real. But the injuries his passengers sustained were. The woman was lucky to survive. And after the way the driver treated her, you can bet she won't be visiting him in jail. Dallas County, Alabama. You're about to witness a moment every cop spends his career trying to avoid. Responding to a street disturbance, Officer Patrick Dempsey in the baseball cap finds himself in a life and death struggle with a crack cocaine dealer. A canine snaps at the suspect's clothes as the officer tries to bring the outlaw to the ground. But the dog is trained for sniffing contraband, and attacking doesn't come naturally to her. Dempsey tries to handcuff the suspect as the dog pulls at the man's jacket. But when the jacket comes free, the criminal worms his way on top and gropes for the cop's sidearm. The officer calls for backup. But his four-legged partner is the only one close enough to help. The situation quickly turns into a nightmare. The suspect takes hold of the officer's gun and uses it to swat the canine. The assailant rises to his feet. Now the officer is looking down the barrel of his own gun. The suspect tries to fire, but the weapon won't respond. Thankfully, the crook's wild swing forced the pistol into the ground, jamming the firing mechanism. The dog doesn't let up. The suspect takes another swing with the butt end of the weapon. The canine is okay, and she gave Dempsey enough time to pull his backup pistol. When the outlaw again takes aim at the patrolman, the officer opens fire. An ambulance is called for the suspect, but it easily could have been the officer who needed medical attention. When a cop's in distress, a partner may be his only hope, even when that partner isn't human. This officer's four-legged friend wasn't a trained attack dog. But on this day, she was the little bit of luck that saved his life. Still ahead. He's on foot. On police video. Tricks of the criminal trade. They're not giving up. They're giving the slip. They're not taking a break, they're taking off. 
and they're not pulling over. They're pulling a fast one. Next. When an officer's on patrol and happens to see somebody standing naked on the side of the street, there are two possibilities. They're either under the influence of a drug or they're emotionally disturbed. But in both cases, they need to be dealt with cautiously. South Salt Lake, Utah. Police discover a naked woman using a parking lot as her personal workout studio. She does some stretching and seems oblivious to her surroundings. But when officers approach, she threatens to fire her bra at them. Get out of the way, get out of the way. As she continues her nude calisthenics, officers know they have to do something. Not only is she breaking public decency laws, she's also about to take her show on the road. To make the situation less threatening, only one officer steps forward. He calms her down and helps her stay warm. Soon, paramedics arrive to take her to a warm place. We gotta get her on that bed. Where she can cool down from her workout. Warsaw, Indiana. Biking with no clothes on may seem perfectly normal to this man. But when the streaking cyclist realizes the cops don't approve, he starts pedaling faster. This spectacle alone could cause an accident. For everyone's safety, officers chase down this bare biker and put an end to his two-wheeled fun. Stop, Stop. Hopefully, the next time he's on a bicycle, he'll be wearing a helmet and some clothes. Priceville, Alabama. It's a cold, rainy night, so this guy must be freezing. An officer tries to help him. Come on over here. But the naked man shrugs off the cop's offer and starts running down the road. Well, you can't miss it, this a naked man running down the road with a patrol car behind him. After a while, the man tires from his nude marathon. For a moment, it looks like he's trying to hail a cab, but this guy has a very different agenda. The officer is careful not to scare him off again. Aren't you cold out here in this rain? I'm freezing. Well, come get in the car and you won't get to Florida. Well, you can't get to Florida naked. Hey. No, you gotta get some clothes on. The officer does his best to keep the erratic man focused. Come on up here and put your hands on the car. Yep. Now, don't run off again. That has nothing to do with what's going on. With this irrational exhibitionist, the officer will need some help. Every time I try to get out of the car, it runs off. So. No, I'll be there, man. In the meantime, the patrolman follows in his cruiser, keeping oh, traffic oh, safely oh, away. The naked man never makes it to Florida, but eventually officers take him to a hospital where he can dry off and get some much needed rest. Working out is good for your health. Stop, Stop. But exercising naked can only get a person in trouble. So when suspects hit the road in their birthday suits, it may be up to an officer in uniform to get them off the streets and back to reality. Priceville, Alabama. Even police officers have days when nothing goes right. These three officers are about to find out just how many obstacles can be set against them. The driver was stopped on suspicion of DUI but he runs like a man possessed, blowing across a busy intersection topping 60. The cops slow down to cross with caution as the suspect heads for the horizon. The officers race to catch up, but are delayed again by traffic in a crowded construction zone. They think the suspect might be stuck in the same location, but he's already gone. The maniac tore through at breakneck speed, forcing astounded drivers to the shoulder. 
The troopers carefully thread their way between the cars and finally get back on the open road. Realizing the suspect is nowhere in sight, the officers radio ahead for others to set up a roadblock. The troopers gun their engines. To their surprise, they once again get back on the suspect's tail. The officers drive him towards the waiting roadblock. Suddenly, he takes a turn onto a side road. The officer's plan to stop him with a roadblock is now useless, but the lead cruiser sees another way. The officer attempted a last-second pit maneuver and nailed it perfectly. The effort stalls the suspect's vehicle. It's the break these officers have been waiting for. He's on foot. The driver runs, and the troopers sprint after him. Moments later, they take him back to the cruiser in cuffs. For these state troopers, what looked like a routine stop turned out to be a major headache. The suspect took them through one obstacle after another. And even when they finally stopped him, the suspect had one more surprise. He was carrying a concealed firearm. The troopers disarm him before he can fire a shot. A very satisfying end to a day where almost nothing went right. Coming up on police videos for these criminals, I can't believe it. The suspects are still going. The grass is always greener. Two Dublin delinquents take police on a field trip. He's still inside there with the soccer pitches. A car thieving couple. He's looking for a way through. Plows a path of pandemonium. They're up on the traffic island. And an armed robber detours through a driving range. Watch out there. It's an all-out turf war. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. From a helicopter, you get a completely different perspective of criminals and criminal behavior. But any way you look at it, one behavior remains constant. There's no honor among thieves. Dublin, Ireland. Hitting high gear on the motorway, two hooligans in a stolen BMW are desperately trying to outrun the law. But the county police, known as the Garda, have a helicopter tracking every move. Officer 2, Roger, yeah, we have more camera. The BMW may be fast, but when the driver gets loose on the soft dirt, the high-speed hijinks come to an abrupt end. Straight across the green, straight across the green. It only took a momentary loss of traction to send the suspects whirling across the center divide and spinning through opposing lanes. The broken down Beamer finally settles to a stop, but the criminal cohorts are still in motion. As they break across a soccer field, the two men agree on a plan of escape. Negative, still inside there with the soccer pitches. The buddies plan to hop a fence and hide near an apartment complex. One suspect heads for the wall, but at the last second, the driver ditches him behind a bush. The fence-jumping suspect hides in the backyard, but his fair-weather friend never appears. By the time the suspect realizes he's on his own, the jig is up. His accomplice is caught a block away, thanks to the Irish eye in the sky. Prisoner arrested, there, units, all units, prisoner arrested. These car thieves started out as partners in crime. But as soon as the getaway got too rough, straight across the green, straight across the green. it was every man for himself. Proof positive. No matter where you look in the criminal world, the only real team players carry a badge. London, England. 
Instead of silent alarms, many British convenience stores employ retractable bulletproof walls to shield cashiers from robbers. When this crook makes a sudden lunge over the counter, he gets a big surprise. It happens so fast, the camera barely catches it. But the wall hits the man right in the neck, pinning him to the ceiling. Incredibly, the device doesn't seriously injure the man. But it does hold him in place until police arrive. It wasn't the wall's intended purpose. But when this man tried to rob the store, he was the one who got held up. Lexington, South Carolina. A patrolman spots a man who just left a suspected crack house. Gonna be a gray Nissan Sentra, one occupant. A standard check on the vehicle's tags reveals the plates are stolen. The suspect knows he's as good as busted, so he goes for broke. Bailing off the boulevard, the crackhead winds through service roads, only to find another squad car lying in wait. Temple on the lead vehicle, he's still running. Threading afternoon traffic, his gas pedal is jammed to the floorboard. Still about 60 miles an hour. The drug-crazed man blazes toward crossing cars without flinching, putting a stunned motorist into double jeopardy. The fugitive and the cop both avoid one vehicle, but the suspect can't miss the second. An innocent driver is spun out as the impact sends the runaway right off the road. After checking on the victims, officers approach the wreck and find the suspect alive and alert. For now, the mayhem is over. Buying a rock of crack may seem like a victimless crime. But when this guy decided to run, Temple on the lead vehicle, he's still running. His decision impacted more than just himself. Still ahead. He's going the wrong way. On police videos. These aren't just chases, they're epics. I can't believe it. The suspects are still going. You'll see cops clash with titans of trouble. He nearly lost it. The Odyssey begins next. The skies above a chase are usually full of news choppers as well as our police helicopters. But while reporters aren't there for the same reason, there are certainly times when they try to help us out. Orange County, California. The guy fleeing in this stolen Cadillac has his hands full. Suspect just turned right, cutting off traffic. When the vehicle's anti-theft tracking system was activated, patrol cars, police choppers, and news helicopters were on his tail in no time. But they're not the only ones on the scene. The thief also has his wife along for the ride. And we can see there's a female passenger. That means this tense driver has an extra distraction in the seat next to him. He's going the wrong way. He figures it'll take some wild maneuvers to get himself and his better half out of trouble. Oh, they're up on the traffic island. The edgy suspect tries to stay in control, popping the median and cutting into opposing lanes. Ignoring a school bus full of children, the hard-driving husband barrels through an intersection. He's now in a residential neighborhood, speeding right through stop signs. But at the next intersection, police are ready with spike strips. He's looking for a way through. Officers are waiting at the corner. But the driver swerves just out of range of the trap. A bottleneck gives police another opportunity. There is heavy traffic on the northbound 55. They close in on the driver, using their cruisers like tweezers to pinch the car. But the renegade avoids getting plucked out of traffic. However, a long curve on the next freeway ramp leaves the suspect wide open. An officer pits the vehicle, spinning it around until it's nose to nose with another cruiser. Police rush in and throw open the passenger door. But the driver isn't ready to give up. 
Whoa! The vehicle retreats from the crowd of cops. Once he's clear, the wheelman throws it into drive and veers across the median. He and his wife are back on the run. I can't believe it. The suspects are still going. But now the whole face of this pursuit has changed. The man has added assaulting a police officer to his list of charges. Knowing her husband's luck can't continue, the woman convinces him to phone the police. The driver is soon connected to a supervisor of the California Highway Patrol. Monitoring the chase, the CHP officer tries to calm the driver, urging him to stop before someone gets hurt. He's headed east toward Anaheim now. Despite the officer's words of warning, the suspect rolls through intersections, ignoring cars and pedestrians. There's a woman in the crosswalk. But the CHP officer keeps him on the line and continues talking. He's on the wrong side of traffic again. Until amazingly, the driver pulls over in the last place anyone would expect, the Anaheim police station. The husband and wife exchange a quick goodbye. We can see inside the car. It looks like they're hugging. And surrender to the police. OK, the driver has his hands up. It's finally over. There's more than one way to stop a suspect. When one maneuver doesn't work, cops will always try another. But this time, the most effective tool for ending a chase was an officer's persuasive voice. It's finally over. The intensity of a pursuit often mimics the offense a suspect has committed. The more heinous the crime, the more desperate the criminal will be to escape. Boise, Idaho. A 911 operator answers a disturbing call from a 73-year-old woman. My house is a shambles. She just torn it all apart. Moments ago, the senior citizen was violently robbed in her own home. Now the suspect is at large, and he's armed and dangerous. Uh, I took a shotgun. Yeah. My grandfather's double barrel shot, man. Dispatch coordinates a sweeping dragnet, and the suspect is spotted, driving right past a police cruiser. The vehicle is failing to yield. Seeing the cop on his tail, the guy leans on the gas and gets downright rude. He flipped me off, so uh, that's his mentality. A careless citizen gives the fugitive a head start, failing to yield to the pursuing officer. Get out of the, room! the cop hangs tough, but it's clear this outlaw will take any advantage he can get. Did they pursue? Did they pursue? And he has no concerns about tearing up his hot ride. He heads the wrong way on a one-way thoroughfare. It's a four-lane exit road from a major expressway. The renegade isn't budging for traffic, so cars are forced to get out of the way. He's wrong way on the connector, wrong way on the connector. The officer isn't willing to match this guy's recklessness. And the gap between Cruiser and Camaro widens. But when opposing traffic parts, it's just the clearing this officer needs. He's able to catch up to the suspect, who's now taken his unpredictable annex into reverse. Showing off his assortment of automotive tricks, the bandit whips the car into a violent fishtail. The tires spit dirt as the fugitive races onto a residential road. One thing about the suspect has become crystal clear. This crook is a skilled motorist. And he has a knack for putting pursuers at a disadvantage. The outlaw races toward a dirt road. For him, the path ahead is wide open. Meanwhile, the cruiser in pursuit ends up choking on the dust. I can't see that side road yet. Although it's not hard to see where the fugitive is running, the question is where will this guy be when the dust clears? Finally, the pursuit hits pavement again, and the suspect is nowhere in sight. But these officers aren't about to throw in the towel. We'll be back in just a moment with the final terrifying conclusion of this long and frustrating chase. Coming up. 
on police videos. They've already lost him once. They don't want to lose him again. But keeping him in sight this time he nearly lost it. won't be your average walk in the park. Watch out there. Next. It's a bitter pill to swallow when a criminal eludes the police. But believe me, this fight's not over yet. A remorseless criminal is taken to the streets. He's proven to be an undeniable threat to society. But what's worse is that he may have slipped through the fingers of law enforcement. Now police are scanning the streets for a Camaro, hoping that the suspect hasn't gotten away. That's when they see the vehicle sitting motionless on the side of the road. Is it abandoned? The officer decides to find out. Like a cockroach running when the lights go on, the suspect scurries off. Back on the open road, the outlaw takes a turn too fast. Burning rubber turns to smoke as his sports car nearly careens off the road. He nearly lost it. Amazingly, the renegade robbery suspect recovers with the skill of a NASCAR pro. But even as he revs his engine back to full throttle, additional units are converging on his position. Three more cruisers join the pursuit. Outnumbered and desperate, the suspect heads for the one place he hopes police won't follow. It's a golf course. Watch out, The Camaro plows onto the putting green. Bewildered golfers watch as the outlaw turns the fairway into a speedway. The police stay in formation, following the Camaro's tracks in the manicured grass. The cruisers funnel back onto a residential street, struggling to keep the Camaro in sight. Step on the road now. Running out of tricks, the suspect tries to use raw speed to race for freedom one last time. The police can't slow him down but they can steer him into a cul-de-sac. And when the outlaw arrives at the dead end, his bag of tricks is finally empty. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! From the word go, this chase had the makings of an epic. He put me off, so uh, that's his mentality. Officers were dealing with an American muscle car in the hands of an expert driver. But while this guy was getting tricky, police were getting ready. So that when the suspect's luck finally ran out, officers were there to take him down. In the world of crime, there is no rock bottom. That's because there's no limit. That one guy's trying to drown the other one. To how low criminals will sink, how much damage they'll inflict, or how many lives they'll bring down. One just went under the truck. When it comes to low lives like these, there's only one way to fight back. It seems to be working. Police must raise their intensity to a higher level.